What up, what up, what up, people? <coughs> right, John. Medi, what's happening, my friend? Nothing, man. I'm good. I'm all good. How are you? I'm surviving, mate. How's it, how's it going? Are, are you finding it? I'm okay, you know. I'm okay. I've got the... Obviously, two young guns, MIS, yeah. one seven, one six, so they keep me active every day. I'm in the garden, on the trampoline, yeah. white rides, walks in the forest, they just keep me active. How, how are they finding it? How are the kids finding it? They just think they're on six weeks holidays. <laughs> they just think they're on a holiday, they're having the time of their life, no school, playing around. The only, the only struggle for them is that they can't get to see their friends. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. You can't really be mixing around with friends, can you? Nah, that's the only thing for them. So they, they end up getting bored and having a fight every so often, but that's about it. You've been, obviously, obviously, like, obviously, you stopped playing football, you retired now, but you're still keeping fit and stuff? Nah, nah, I've, my fitness has fell off completely, completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, I, I went for a little period of trying to stay fit. Um, I was like that even when I was playing. I, I was, I was, I had spells of being fit and spells of not being so fit. You know what I mean? But now nah, my little boy is active. He wants to play football all the time, so he's on my case. So uh, I think in this period we've been doing a couple of little workouts and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I've got a little bit of a bug to get fit again. Okay, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Are you, are you finding it though? Like, fortunately, like, obviously you played in a game for a while. Now. Do you miss it? Do you look sometimes when you watch football? Do you like? Are you like, damn, like, I miss it? You know what? I missed it anyway when when I was watching football, but yeah. now in this now in this period what we're in now, it's made me realise how much football plays in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? Because my work now is football, watching games up and down the country with my clients. My little son plays football. Um, yeah. You makes you realise how much you watch football on TV. Like it's it, I it's made me realise how much and and influential football is in my life for sure. But yeah, definitely when I when I stop playing football. You, you, even when you're watching, like I knew, I got to a stage where I just knew my body couldn't do it no more. Yeah. So I was, I was prepared to stop playing football. But it's, it's the, it's the best job in the world. When, when you're doing it and you're, and you're healthy and you're fit, it's the best job you can ever have. Of course. Now, as we move on, John, tell us a bit about yourself and um, where you come from and how you got into football. Um, yeah, so I come out of East London. I was. Um, Got into football through through my dad taking me over to um I was I think I was at Ripaway for for the first year then we we moved over to Semrab I was I was fortunate enough we had a, a great age group and a and a great set of, uh, of friends that was all into football and loved football with the same passion that we had um over once the flats with that team um do you even know him you know Danny Carnegie Footsie yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so he. Yeah, he, he was my bona fide from day one under nines. We we played through Semrab together all the way up to Charlton youth team. So we, we left our we left our Sunday team at um fourteen years old. I ended up joining Charlton, um coming yeah, and then going on to getting the youth team. I started off it as a as a forward. By the time I got into the youth team, I was playing centre half. And, um, yeah, you're laughing at me now. I was, I was I was a dead centre forward back then, man. But um, yeah, so I, I had a really good youth team. I had um, Scotty Parker, Paul Kincheski, um Kevin Lisby, um, another boy from our ends, a lad called Kemi Is it? He went on to play for Colchester. You was probably there with him, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was there with him, yeah. Yeah, yeah so Kemi, Kemi was in my, he was in my same Sunday team as well from, from like nine years old all the way to 18 at Charlton together. So we had, we had a good group of lads who come through, you know what I mean? And I was just obviously fortunate enough to keep getting better and, and then found my way in the first team by about 19, I think it was, yeah. How was it, how was it for you, like, obviously, like you said, coming from Sunrad and that? Um, going to Charlton at fourteen. How was it? How was it for you, like breaking in the first team? What, what was the feeling like? Thinking that like, I'm here. It's a, it's a weird one because you see your you see your peers do it before you. So um, Lisby was the first one who got in. 
then Koncheski and Parker got in at a young age. They, they were playing at like 16. They were like England wonder kids. So, you know, it's a possibility, but you're just waiting for your time. And obviously, yeah. I had that period of time where I was a centre forward and only been playing centre half for maybe about one or two years. So I was I was growing rapidly and getting better rapidly. And then all, all of a sudden, it just clicks one year when you know you're, you're going to have a chance, you know. And I was knocking yeah. on the door. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to have an opportunity soon because I was playing the reserves and I was doing so well. Yeah. And then um, finally got the call up. It, it was a mad one because it was... Um, I'd been in and around the first team for quite a while, but my actual first start was just before 9-11. So I'd been yeah. sub a few times and played and played. But I'd not, I'd, uh, I'd not made a, a start from the beginning yet, you know what I mean? I'd been on loan and played some games at Mansfield and then 9-11 happened the day before. Yeah. And we had a we had a cup game, and everyone thought it was going to get called off. But obviously, them times I didn't realize the effect of what it was having on the world. I was just thinking, nah, I got a game tomorrow. I need to play as a start. You know what I mean? They can't take this start away from me. What they're playing at? And then, um, lucky enough, lucky enough, the game the game went through. I had my first start, and I, I scored a goal on my debut, my first full debut. So from there, it just gives you that confidence that yeah, I'm I'm ready for this. Mm, 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 no, that that's that's crazy still. Like yeah. you said, like you come up with some a lot of good players, like Scott, Scotty Parker, Lisby. Uh, I was I was lucky enough to play with Lisby as well because um, I think coming to the end of his career, he he come to Colchester, and he still had it. He's like he could finish. His movement was yes. was sick. Yeah. Yeah, so Liz, Liz, I was on the phone. I done one of these with him the other day. To be fair, we we, we we've, we've been friends from. 15, 16 years old but we've not really spoke about the same way me and you've known each other for a lot of years not really gone over each other's careers and we had we done one of these and he um, when he went Colchester he had just left Charlton yeah. and he was he was trying to find himself again you know what I mean because he, he'd been used to playing and he, he he'd been injured and he dropped down a couple of levels and that was a, that was a rebirth of him in that respect that he got that confidence to go on and play again like, Liz, Liz, Liz was top draw Liz was top drawer he was. He, um, like, like you said, for everyone me, has that like you said, John, everyone has that um like little situation where you have to go down to come back up or they have that little um they go into that little dark patch when the car every every, every 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 uh, every footballer will have that what at some that, point, you know what I mean? What was it like for you? Well when I had my ones. Yeah. Yeah, my my ones were for um but obviously, you have you have little ones. What you think are, are really big when you're when you're on the bench or you're not playing, and you think you yeah. should be. But yeah. the, the 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 first time it really happened to me was when I um trying to, we, we got relegated from the Premier League, and then I, I was obviously running my contract down to try and get back to the Premier League. Yeah, and I, I was playing. I was doing really well, and then I had about four months left of my contract at Charlton. And then we played Crystal Palace, which was a big derby game. And then I jumped up for a header, which I would do every day of my life. And then all of a sudden, my Achilles tendon popped, snapped. You know what I mean? And then obviously, you come into the change room and then the doctor tells you, you've ruptured it. You're going to be out for nine, nine to 12 months. And I'm like, wait a minute, I've only got four months on my contract, you know? Contract. Mm. Yeah, so you're. I'm used to getting a, a certain wage and a certain style of living, and all of a sudden that's taken away, and you've got to rehab. Yeah, that, that that was the first dark spell for me. I think. Yeah. So how did you how did you recover from that? What was your um, like your mentality like? Just what just want to play again, don't you? Just want to get back fit and and healthy and play again. But um, you're out for a long time. It's it's tough. Any any anybody who has any injury is tough. But when you're out for such a long time. It is very tough, and then I I did manage to get back. I went up to Sheffield United, um, yeah. fortunate enough to to get back playing a few games, but I weren't back to the level I was. I rushed it because I wasn't um, under contract, and I just wanted a new contract. I, yeah. I was rushing, so I was back playing within seven months. You know what I mean? Okay. But it, training and trying to play, but it took me over. I don't think I was fully recovered to about over a year. You know what I mean? And then obviously I've come back, come back, started playing again, got a few games, and then it, it so so be it. From from my situation, it happened again a year a year later. Wow, a year later, and then obviously you're back in the same place again. But no, as I said, we all have we all have some sort of it's it's, it's a roller coaster this career, as you know, highs and lows, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, 
Like I said, yourself, what, that, was your, what was your what was your spells then that you thought for yourself? Um, my spells was when I was I was still young at the time. I was like 17, 18 when um like I was doing so well. It was mad because for I come into Colchester when I was fourteen, mm -hmm. and they used to let me. It was mad because I always say the same story to my friends. Is like every time we played the Watfords and all that. I will play. But when it come down to the Chelsea's, the Arsenal's and that, I was young at the time, so I wasn't even thinking. Those like, uh, no, you don't have to play this game. Um, you know. They're trying to hide but you. I, yeah. So when I look back at it, like, I was thinking, no, they was really trying to keep man there. Like, they didn't want man to progress, but yeah. obviously they gave me my, um, my debut and that. But yeah, the, uh, Marlowe's point was, don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a great manager. And he's done, he's done so well in his career. Paul Lambert, obviously, he's won the Champions League and stuff like yes, that. Yes, of course. But when he, when he comes to Colchester, oh, my days. Well, on, is was he just on you or just off? Yeah, I remember when um, it was like big players. It was me, Johnny Jackson. Um, who, who else? A couple, a couple big players. He was just, he was not feeling. And he was making us come in, do running. We're changing a separate room with the youngsters. Everyone will go have their lunch and um, whatnot, what go home, and we'll come back out doing running. And obviously, I was like 19 going on 20 at the time. You know, like, yes, when it's hard to take. I couldn't, yeah. yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. Like, I was finding it so hard, and I just stopped coming into training. Yeah. Like, at that age, I just stopped coming into training, and you know what? Um, a couple of things happened. Obviously, he got sacked, something happened with um, inside, and uh, he got sacked, and then coaches just said, you know what? They want to give me another two year deal, but that, that was my lowest point, I think, for football. Yeah, pe was, people on the go on, people on the outside world don't understand how much certain indiv individuals can influence your career, of course, of course. And that's what they see, you know, what like I said, they see that oh, he's playing football, he's getting the money, but they don't see the the roller coaster ride, like you say, there's so many emotions that you go through in football, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. We we do it. I do it pitch with family members now and young players and, and players that are still playing and and like I said, the roller coaster, the ups and downs, and the biggest thing you don't obviously you're still you've had your fortunate because you you've you found a way to have a career away from football as well. Yeah. But when when you, when football's your when football's your everything, you, it becomes a bubble. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you don't understand what's going on in the outside world. No, because you're, you're right. trained. You're trained. You're trained not to. You're trained to just go in every day. Get your nut down, train, work hard, go home, rest, and do the, and repeat and do the same thing the next day. Yeah, like I remember, I remember, I remember going into, I remember thought, yeah, this story. I remember going into, I was in digs, I was in digs, yeah. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm a young kid, so I'm in digs. At least, at this point, I ain't got a laptop. <laughs> so obviously, obviously. What are you, what are you saying? What are you saying? You got one now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course I got one that I watch. So I'm I'm not thinking. I'm in bigs. I'm not thinking. So I I go on I go on the family's computer. Like I'm watching, you know the yeah them channels. <laughs> 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 so the next the next morning now, I see like um I don't know like when you work with kids, you get people that come and check your computers. Oh wow! I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah, so I see them. I see them around the computer, and I'm thinking, "What's happening here?" So I said, "Yeah, I'm off to training. I'm off to training there." When I go to training there, Garrett Williams, my manager at the time, was saying, "Ah, oh, come, come in my office." I was thinking, "What's happening now?" As soon as I walked, I walked in, the first thing he done looked at me and started busting up. He started laughing. <laughs> I was thinking, like, "Why is he laughing?" He said, "Man, if you're gonna go on them things, make sure you just use your own laptop." I started laughing. I said, oh, <laughs> you catch. You get catch, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that day, oh, it was one of the funniest days. But yeah, people don't know like what you go through, man. They just see the money and they see oh, you're training, you're playing football, but they don't they don't see the other side, man. Well, it's especially in today's world now, it's it's more accustomed for people to talk about mental health and struggles and being down and up, but mm -hmm. I would say you're you're ten years younger than me, but you come up within the same characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Compared to today's youngsters, you're 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 that bridge between, and yeah, no. you couldn't show you couldn't show emotions around the training ground. You couldn't you couldn't show you as vulnerable. You know what I mean? Or you as down because 
people would jump on you and I see it as a sign of weakness. So you're always betraying yeah. your son you're always betraying your somebody else when you're when you're fighting with other young men to get a spot, to earn yeah, a contract. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a jungle out there in terms of to to even to get to being a professional footballer. Look look at what we're talking about from our, our kids of when we was at Semrab or your 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 grassroots team. Like Everybody wants to be a professional footballer, don't they? Like whether it's everyone wants to be a Premier League, but everyone's trying to be a professional. So there's so many people you're fighting and competing against. You no, know, and like you said, like we was um, the lucky ones that had a little career or had a career. Like, no, but like you see it, you see it um, after after every year, how many footballers, how many kids drop out? They don't yeah. even get a pro. Like the list gets bigger and bigger every year. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Look, I, I, unfortunately enough, I can look back now and my, have my regrets and um my, and praise myself for certain things. But you you get to do that when your career is done, you know. But I can obviously now I, I speak to other people that made it. And anybody who's had a career as a professional footballer, you you you've achieved something for sure. Mm. Folks, like you said, you had a you had a good youth team. Like when you was coming up, was there any other players you played against at that um at that age? Like other teams, you thought no. They've got a sick team. Like, I always heard Smithy talk about West Ham and all these other... Like, who was the other teams that you thought, you know what? Yeah, we had... We used to play... T- on my time, so my era is like... The, the lads who come out of our... our who was the top youth team them times there? You would have... So, yeah, West Ham won the Youth Cup. That was uh, a year below me, which you're, I think Smithy's trying to talk about. That was Izzy Arepin, Jermaine Defoe's age group and that, that era type of one. My one, our Arsenal had a sick youth team, a pal that I worked with, um, Paolo Vanazza, um who, who was tremendous. Um, Ashley Cole in that youth team. Wow. Um, West Ham, my age group, had Rio and Frank Lampard as, as a year above me playing against them. But there, there was one player in the youth team we played. Obviously, there was lots of players who come through that time. Tottenham had Ledley King, Crouchy, and wow. Alton Fellwell, who would have come out of East London. So, but there was we played we played Newcastle, yeah. I mean, not Newcastle. Sorry, we played we played Ipswich, and my youth team decent. We beat them five one. Yeah, like we you think you're better than or whatever. But every single one of us walked off, the, walked off that pitch saying, "Who was that little light skinned boy in midfield? His name was Kieran Dyer. Like he absolutely run. Even though we beat him five one, he was the best player in the park still by far. Yeah. I always remember the first time I see him, he was something special. Kieran Dyer from from yeah. Ipswich. Where did he go from Ipswich? Was that straight to Newcastle? Or straight to yeah, Newcastle bought him. Yeah, put him on some big. He was the first one to go on them big monies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Obviously, talking about the youth team, that now you've gone. You were the big boys now. Like, how was it playing in a prem? Like coming in and playing in a prem. You know, um, it's it's a weird. It's it's. I was thinking about it because I'm fortunate enough there's that when I broke into the youth team, I mean, the first team, that's all I knew, you know what I mean? Because mm. the the group that I was around as my older pros, they got promoted to the Premier League. Yeah. So I was in and around that squad, but I never played. Mm. And then and then the in the premiership, that's where I made my full debut for Charlton. So I had um I had a really good pre-season. I've, I felt like I'm ready now. I'm just turning nine. I'm 19, pushing on 20, and I'm ready. Yeah. And then um, we played Everton, first game of the season. We're, we're losing 1-0. So just gone out at half-time, as you do, just running up and down, kicking the ball yeah. around, not expecting to come on. And then, uh, you, know, they, you know, when you get that call from someone comes out and says, come in, the manager wants you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I'm like, you know that one? You're like, oh, shit, this is, this is real. This is real, you know what I mean? So obviously run back in and he's just doing the team talk and he's just gone... Da da da! You're coming off fortune. You're on. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. You just mm. if something just kicks into you, you, don't know how to explain it. You just you just go out, don't you? But that Everton team. So I'm centre half. I'm playing up front against um, Duncan Ferguson and Kevin Campbell, making my debut. Hey! Against them. Yeah, so two that's two big guys. Big that's <laughs> a big unit. Dangerous. Yeah, that was a serious partnership. So um, yeah, no, I done I done really well. I played half again. I mean, I always find it easier as a young kid when you played against players like names like that. If you if you played well, your your name travelled further be, instead of doing it against people that people didn't know. So I was yeah. fortunate that them two was up front. They were they were dangerous. They were big names, and because I competed and done well, the next the next day I remember our captain he come in. I think we lost one nil. I come on at half time. It was one nil, 
and we lost one nil. And he come in the next day, and the manager was reading us the right act. Like not sure. it was a home game, first game of the season. Da 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 da. He's got to be doing better. And the captain walked in, and he was like, "There was only one shining light in that game, and that was that young man who made his debut. The rest of us were shit." And I was just like. Uh, that, that's a nice feeling, you know what I mean. Yeah, so no. from from there, again, again, the respect to the team, and obviously went on to play probably about fifteen, fifteen games that season. No, of course, that's that's always a nice feeling. And I, that just reminded me of um, when I scored my first goal. I was seventeen at the time in the in the champ, and um, like you said, big players like at that time Teddy Sheringham was there as well. Mm-hmm. And um, the next day, I think it was uh, Monday. Monday come the next week come. And it was like, um, he pulled me over and he was talking to me and he shook my hand and he said, is that your first goal? I was like, yeah. And he says, like, well done. Like, you know, like a big player like that, you don't need to do that. No, like, it means, know? it means, no, you don't have to go away, but it means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah, of yeah, course. It and means a lot, especially, that. especially for someone who's done, has achieved what he's achieved in the game. You know what I mean? Of course. No, no, that was, that was, that was a good feeling. Yeah, for funny enough, like- he, he was, he was one of my... In in the next three or four games I played, I played against him at Tottenham as well. So it was him and Les Ferdinand at Tottenham at the time. I Jesus. Think. Yeah. So that that particular area, that, the strike forces were, were crazy. Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank, and Ida Good Johnson, Shira, Viduka, like all them all them names there, mate. No, there some serious but players there. Don't, you're naming all these players. Let's talk about the Henri situation. <laughs> 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 that, that was later on. That was a, that was a few years later. Hey, you see that? You see that? Obviously, you're playing against big boys like that. Like, like I said to someone else. See, when you go to bed now, you're, at that age, you're thinking, "I'm coming up against these big players." Like, how was it? Like the night before, or like just going into the game, thinking Hasselbeck, like Johnson, and all these players. Yeah, but like he said, it was it was my norm at the time. So it was a, obviously every weekend you're playing against another team, and they are every team was stacked with centre-forwards without a shadow of that. Even if you was playing someone who's bottom of the table, say, like, we was going away to play um, who was bottom, Sunderland were bottom at the time or whatever, they, they would have a Kevin Phillips or a Tor Andre Flo, you know what I mean? Like, everybody had, everyone had a firepower. Yeah. That's mad. Like, like I said, this is, this is something, like, no one can ever take away from me. Like, you played in the Prem and you played against big players. But let's say sure, that, yeah. like, take me, take me to that only situation because I remember that that yesterday, like, so, you, like it was really on on his back, like what? Yeah, no. Nah. You know what? You know what assassinated me? I, I was saying it to Liz the other day. It was yeah. so the game happened. So the game's playing. I think they beat us three one or whatever like that. You know what I mean? So he's got he's coming to the box. I'm trying to push him out the box like really like trying to on his back like type of one you know what I mean and he's just obviously lean he leaned back rose me off the floor and, and back healed it but we uh I'm tired at the time Ashley Cole's one of my best friends at the time yeah we, we lived in the same house in development so he's jumped in I think we've met up because we're going out that night you know what I mean as a young man done sometimes I was, I was out every night so we jumped in, we were out, and he's like, no, nah, look, he goes, don't worry about that. He goes, Omri, Bad's up, Soul, Tony Adams, Keown, he does, he does them kind of things to everybody every day. Like, that's minor. So I'm like, all right, cool. Roll out, have a drink, normal. Match of the day comes on. I wait to see, obviously, what Alan Hansen's got to say, because he's, he's the main pundit them times. <laughs> He's like, look, Fortune's got as tight as you want him to a centre half to get. He's probably got over tight, but that's what every young centre half's taught to get tight. So I'm like, all right. Ash has given me the through ball to say it was all right. And the Hansen's given me the through ball to say, no, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? So I'm like, cool, forget about it. Mm. Season's gone. Carried on, played the games or whatever. Two twos. I think the next year or a year later, Sky. Plus comes out, yeah. <laughs> and Sky re- Sky released this advert with fortunes on his back. Pulls rewind, fortunes on his back. Pulls rewind. But they done that. They done uh, advert in obviously the launch of Sky Plus that you can have a control that rewinds everything. Mm. So that's that's when it got. That's when it come to them. Everybody's attention. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, it's the equivalent now of a meme on, on or. Uh, or saying going viral, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I had about a year and a half of not even paying attention to it. 
then all of a sudden it's in everybody's living room because everybody's got <laughs> Sky. Everyone's got Sky at that time, and Sky Plus is just running this fucking advert every fucking. It seems like they're running the advert every day for about a year. No, that's mad. That's that's bitch, why you man. you can say you can say to anybody. Like a couple of pals there to wind me up. You go anywhere, a barbershop or whatever, and you go to someone. Oh, you remember that on Regal? And then everyone's like, Yeah, man, remember that with the back hill? Yeah, yeah, you remember that back hill one? And they go, Yeah, that was him on his back. And they just start going, Oh, I remember that goal. I remember. Like everybody, everybody remembers that goal because of the advert. Apart, apart from that, thought, yeah, like when, when you was playing against him, like what was he like as a player? Like what was he like? He was, he was. He was just, um, how can I put Omri? So people ask me about who's the best player you've ever played against. And I say Omri without, without a shadow of a doubt. And I say it because in, in two in two ways. Because first of all, you was playing against the Invincible team, which is probably yeah. the best team ever in the Premiership. And so the team's fantastic, but he was the X factor on the team. You know what I mean? You got, before you get to Omri, you've got, what well, Ashley Cole was doing at left back, Perez, Bergkamp, Vieira, Sol Campbell, like that. That team was just they were just men who were, who were excellent, but they they were just running on a different level to anybody else, like anybody else. Yeah. But Omri, one of the funniest things I remember, I'm playing I'm playing centre half with a guy called Richard Rufus, yeah, yeah, and and he was quick. Like we in our team, he's probably the quickest, yeah. All of a sudden, the ball's gone over the top. Omri's breezed him out and then scored a goal, yeah? Yeah. But as he's running back, Richard Richard won a talker. He's a serious, serious brother, yeah? As he's running back, Omri's like tapping him on the shoulder. Guy, look, oh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't get to sleep early last night. I had a late night. Like, trying to say, like, I'm not even... <laughs> trying to say to my man, look, I'm not even at my best yet. You know what I mean? And my Omri was just like, just didn't even hear what he said. I was thinking, "Oh my fucking god!" If he's done that, if he's done that to Richard, and I'm not, I'm not nowhere near as quick as Richard. Like you, you just had to get your brain thinking differently. Like you see, like like you said, like even when you saw him, did he have that? Not in a bad way. That arrogance. Like I'm the man. Yeah, him, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Hundred, hundred percent. He just had. He just. He was just moving different to anybody else. You know, he was on a different planet to anybody else in the Premier League at that time. You know what I mean? He he just looked like and he looked like if if we went and played for our mate Sunday team, you know what I mean? Yeah. How you would just yeah. how you how graceful you would look on the pitch to anybody yeah. else. Yeah. He he was just he was he was doing that with Premier League players. So so I was even gonna say who's your toughest opponent and who's the best player you played against. So I'm I'm assuming you're gonna say No, nah, he no, nah, he's like I said, that 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 team that invincible team were 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 tremendous from and the the mad part is I remember um like I said, I was I was close close with Ash at the time, so we're doing we used to do team show, you know obviously you've done team yeah. shape you, before. So it's on a on a Thursday we're doing team shape for the game on Saturday. And Curbs he used to walk for every position and he's our manager Curbs. He's got Lisby as our centre forward and he's basically told him you're gonna man mark Ashley Cole tomorrow. Because he's a threat. He run, he overlaps, everything comes down. Ashley Cole overlaps, um, Perez comes inside, Omri um, goes to the outside, and like everything comes down that left channel, you know what I mean? And we done we done about an hour doing that. And I remember getting off the phone, I remember finishing training and getting on the phone to him saying I've just spent an hour doing team shape on a left back. Like I said, the forward is marking a left back tomorrow. Like it's crazy. You can't imagine that, can you? No, nah, that's mad. But I uh, understand because them days there, Ashley Cole was moving crazy. Yeah. But saying that, saying that, like obviously you played, like you said, you played with a lot of good players in that. Give me your best eleven. Um. So there's, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you what was. So there'd be a, there'd be a footballing one where they, they was at their prime in terms of they were yeah. playing, and then I'll throw a couple of names in that come down when they weren't in their prime. Uh, cool. So there was a, we had a goalkeeper called Dean Kiley. He was an Ireland national. He was, he was tremendous from that period of time. Um, right back would have been Luke Young, who ended up breaking into the England squads and went on to Aston Villa for a lot of money. Um. 
Richard Rufus, as I said, center off. He would have played with a guy called. Um, he only come to us for a half a season. A guy called Jules yeah. Costa, his name was. So he was, he fell out. He was in the Portuguese national team and he was captain, but he, he had yeah. he had fallen he had fallen out with um, the manager. So he needed to play to go to the Euros, the two thousand and four Euros. So yeah. somehow he he come to us and he was. He was class. He was a man, but he was class. You know what I mean. And then, but obviously, I'm a young man. I'm only I'm only nineteen, twenty. I'm just breaking into the team, and I'm playing centre half with him. He don't he don't speak no English. He's got little funny comments here and there, but I didn't appreciate what level of footballer he was or had been. You know what I mean? Because you're so young. Yeah. It was only after he left, he went back to Porto. He played in the Euros for Portugal with. Um, so he's captain in Figo's team. You know what I mean? Rui Costa, all them superstar man. He's captain. And then he, he went on to win the Champions League with Mourinho that first year at Porto. Wow. Yeah, so he was a he was a big big dog player to be fair. Um left back would have been Kincheski or Chrissy Powell. Um midfield would be we had a lad called Klaas Jensen, who was class. He was a he was a yeah, Denmark international. Yeah, he was, a, he was he was a serious, serious baller. Um I would say um, Mark Kinsella, who was a midfielder. He would have been, was it Colchester before you left? He had gone, think, yeah, he, he, come, he yeah. come from Colchester to us. He was uh, like an yeah. Ireland international. Him and Matty Holland were together in midfield. He was good. Um, the guy who was the best player who played <coughs> with us at the time was a lad called, who had come through my youth team, was Scotty Parker. Mm. For, um, for, for three years, he was exceptional. He was... But then that, that year, we were, I think we were fourth in the Premier League at the time. Yeah. And Scotty was, was like, he was like a Kante. He was like two players in one, you know what I mean? Just doing two people's jobs. And then Chelsea, who we were, who we were ahead of at the time in the Premier League, they come in and bought him. Mm. They bought him for like 10 million at the time. That's, that's, that's the levels he was playing at. Um, left wing, I'll say Jerome Thomas. Big he player, skill. Yeah, he was a skillful, skillful player. I mean, I think he he could have, he had a very good career. He got back into the Premier League with West Brom. Had some very good seasons there. But I think if he if he was playing, like like yourself, if he was playing today in modern day football. It, it was more suited for him now. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he was having to play. He was having to play left midfield back then in a four, where in today's game, yeah, we're yeah. tracking back and playing direct football where today's play he was doing that inverted winger back then he was a he was a right side winger playing on the left side before it was common knowledge to do that you know mm. and um up front um Jason Yule who um is a close close pal of mine that we we got from Wimbledon who's who scored a lot of goals for us and had some had some amazing seasons for us and um yeah up front would be Lisby and, and Bartlett I think for sure together I probably named I probably named a couple too many in there because I don't want to break people's hearts or go back to them. But the um, the players that I left that were that were big names would be um, we had John Barnes come to Charlton when I was about nine when I was about eighteen nineteen probably about eighteen yeah so he was obviously at the end of his career and he was he was my hero as a kid. Like that yeah. Liverpool team that's the reason why I was a Liverpool fan and he was just to have, just to have. Uh, Six months with him and to pick his brain was was something phenomenal. You know, what I mean, he couldn't run no more. He couldn't run at all no more. But he, yeah, I didn't see him give, I didn't give, I didn't see him give the ball away at all. He just, he got it. He knew he was around him and just kept it passing. And the other one as a big name would be Paolo Di Canio. He, he come chart, yeah, he come chart on for a, a year, and we had we had him for a year. We, he was he was phenomenal. He come at like thirty five, yeah. and you could still see. I, mean, I played against him at West Ham, so I knew what he had already. But you can still see at 35, like how good he was, you know. Big Paolo, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a character as well, man. Madman, full, full, full on madman. Yeah, that's it. You got a couple of good players there, you know. You got a lot of yeah, good no, players. Cool. Like, what would you tell? What would you tell the kids of today that, obviously, them, the people that the young kids that want to play football and that who are trying to go after and you know grinding that. What would you tell them? It's just the same message, man. Just it's 
it's the best job you could ever have if you get there. But the the, the process and the workload to get there is is sacrifice, dedication, effort, um, determination, all them things like talent. Everybody, when you get to that level, everybody's got talent. Yeah, of course, hundred percent. You know what I mean? So it's all the other things that make up what type of what type of professional you're going to be, or what level you end up getting to. Mm. Thank you for today, John. Man. Thank you for this. No, no, pleasure, man. Pleasure, pleasure, bro. Any time. Thank you Anytime. for coming on. Hope Anytime, you and the family friend. stay safe. Take care. Respect. Love, John. Ladies, my friend.